Well, uh, th uh, thank you, Nahina, and thank you, everyone, for, uh, for, for being here. It's an honor to be with you all, and uh, I do hope that uh, as we speak now that uh, this finds you all uh, well and your loved ones as well, and uh, I hope that you and your loved ones and your countries and um, all stay secure and safe. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Uh, I'm, I'm Hassan. I, uh, I am now the chair of the accounting department at Al Ma'arif University. Um, Ali, uh, my colleague, has made it a lot easier for me now. He kind of laid the ground uh, for me to, to get into um, another topic that we worked on. Um, prior to joining Al Ma'arif University, that was uh, three years ago, I, um, I lived in Australia um, for, for about 13 years or 14. I worked uh, as a lecturer, accounting lecturer. Uh, um, the, the accounting department seems like dominating today. <laughs> um, as an accounting lecturer um, at Charles Darwin University for since 2009. Um, in fact, I've, I've brought a lot of uh, experience with me uh, from Australia. Uh, one that, uh, that I never thought I'll use was the um, the e-learning experience <clears throat> uh, Charles Darwin University as you may all know it's uh, been uh, involved and in, um, in, in online learning for for a very long time so I did uh, teach there and uh, luckily I, I managed also to use that uh, here at uh, Al Ma'arif University since they arrived um, <clears throat> Today, um, I will be speaking about um, assessment, and uh, I think um, um, COVID and the, the, the crisis that we went through has, um, I, I think, um, I hope that uh, I'm not wrong there, but has managed and somehow to, um, to get us out of the box that we kind of been living in in academia for a very long time and to rethink um, uh, what we've been doing for a very long time uh, to see why we're actually doing the work that we do uh, the way uh, uh, that we've been doing it for, uh, for, for a long time. One of those issues is definitely assessment. Um, I, um, I thought why are we assessing students in the first place? Um, are we assessing them for um, to give them a grade? Are we grading them? or are we actually you know, assessing them in order to assure that we're achieving the learning objectives of the course and uh, the learning objectives and the outcomes of the school that they belong in and that, that, that major and their uh, specialization that they specialize in. Um, are we assessing them in a way to, uh, to align uh, these, um, uh, you know, these and, and accumulate these learning objectives that they achieve from each course in each, uh, in each, from each school. Uh, so they achieve and come out with a certain set of competencies and graduate attributes at the end. Are we succeeding in that? So um, I, I thought, you know, although we start off um, by, by some certain goal um, in our mind when we actually, um, you know, start to teach a course. We say, well, this is this is the set of learning objectives that we wanted to achieve, and based on that, we are supposed to um, design activities. You know, uh, you know, design the lectures and choose the chapters that we'll actually cover in this course, uh, the readings that will students be required to do, and the set of um, formative assessments that we may take students through. Um, and, and, you know, hopefully by the end of these activities, you know, by the end of the lecture, by the end of uh, these readings and, and activities that we assign to students, the students will be able to achieve certain learning outcomes. And these learning outcomes, once accumulated throughout the semester, we then um, be able to conduct a summative assessment at the end of the semester. The objective of that summative assessment, as you may all know, is basically to tell me that the student is now able to analyze, if that is the learning objective, is to evaluate. It is now the student is able to criticize or to prepare or to apply or to define. 
depending on um, what the learning objective is. But the big question here is, um, are, are we succeeding? D to what extent summative assessments have actually, um, and, and this, this applies where in the traditional learning um, um, plus the, I'm not sure whether we can call it the traditional, but I mean by the traditional is the pre-COVID uh, uh, most dominating pedagogies and uh, teaching philosophies that were used. To what extent um, some of the assessment have actually uh, played the role that they're meant to, which is again, is to make sure um, that the student has now achieved the learning objectives. Um, from, you know, now recently, I've actually, and, and while, while we're doing this work, I've, I've talked with, um, with a lot of accounting firms and a lot of accounting offices, and um, it was interesting that, that they, um, the, the two, two, two observations, one, that they questioned the output of universities prior COVID. So when traditional learning was there, um, they they questioned you know the value and the 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 true um, attributes and the true skills and competencies that uh, students actually do have when they graduate from universities. I know that this they cannot be carried uh, across, but 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 they did um, they did the quest, they did you know raise concerns about this. However, they raised a serious concern when it came to online learning. They seem that they do not trust the um, the way we're assessing students now, with uh, with all the talk around uh, cheating and uh, the lack of uh, um, um, you know legitimate tools that actually can prevent plagiarism and and all of that. Um, also, with the with the with the talk about the ill prepared instructors and the lack of infrastructure and on and all of this. So. Um, I, I think I can. I could also relate that discussion to an article that was written once in the Business Insider. But, um, uh, talk about the, uh, the, you know, the top companies in the world. Talking Apple, Google, Amazon, and uh, Facebook, and all this. They, they, you know, they say that uh, you know universities are failing in uh, in preparing um, students for employability. I know we we can debate this, um, you know, respect of whether I agree or disagree. But but this is. Uh, this is what um, what came out. Um, I think the issue here is about alignment. So summative assessment, how aligned are they to the learning objectives? The question again here, can we really, in even in a traditional way, uh, can, could we really assess students' um, achievement of, learning, of the learning objectives in a two or three hour final exam? Um, to, to what extent this, uh, this assessment, this summative assessment, really um, aligned with the learning objective? So if a, if a student is an A student, uh, if someone scores an A on the final exam, does this, did this tell me prior to COVID that the student has actually achieved all the learning objectives since he's a high distinction student or he's an A student or she? Um, this, so the issue is with alignment. Um, after COVID or throughout COVID, we're still there. Um, we had to, I think, pay a closer attention. And here I'm talking about uh, the Omar University experience, but particularly here. Um, we had to, to, to pay closer attention and spend time um, which we were meant to do that earlier, and we probably were doing the audit and reviews of, of final exams, but we did it in, um, you know, more this time since, you know, we have to think again out of the box, kind of, or and think about the way we were doing things uh, for, for the last decades. Um, it, it, it appeared that nice. Uh, assessments, final assessments, summative assessments are not so aligned. So it could be that the learning objective is about, um, you know, uh, to criticize or to evaluate. However, the, the, the summative assessment, the final exam, uh, tests students on their ability to define and their ability to apply and their ability to prepare. Okay, so the issue here was with, um, um, with, with the alignment here. 
And if we look at the most common layout of assessment structures, um, whether it's, uh, f it's in Australia where, where I worked and then some other universities as well, or in Lebanon or, or in, in the Middle East generally and in Europe, and mostly we're talking about 80% of the um, assessments are summative. I know some universities may, may have a different structure than this, but um, and, um, you know, we're talking about an 80% of the assessment is, is, um, is summative and 20% uh, for formative assessments. Um, I do understand why, um, why universities and we choose um, and we may continue to um, rely heavily on summative assessments since, you know, and we're talking mainly here about final exams. <clears throat> um, we're talking about, you know, final exams, they've been seen as an authentic way. We can hold students accountable and it's, um, um, it's a requirement by most accreditation bodies and uh, you know ministries of education around I, I know um, uh, if, if, I'm, if I'm correct there um, the Institute of uh, Certified Public Accountants in Australia CPA uh, require um, a prior to issue the accreditation for the accounting departments and uh, in, in School of Business uh, that they uh, need to have in the assessment structure not less than 60 percent of the of the assessment should go to final exams and this 60 percent should be a proctored and invigilated uh, final exam okay um i'm not sure how did they go about this now um the, this uh, after COVID. um so so again this is an, a requirement again um it's also it's non-time consuming and put a smiley face there because I, um, I assume the reaction on your faces once you see that. I know it's um, in, compare, in comparison with the uh, formative assessments, it's non-time consuming. Um, so, so basically, um, this was debatable um, in uh, this, you know, this way of assessing students is debatable and was debatable and will continue to be debatable prior to COVID and in a traditional learning environment. Okay, so definitely, in my opinion here, uh, this assessment structure does not work in online learning and we need to uh, change the assessment structure, uh, change the rigid uh, assessment items that we had prior then. And this is the work that we did at Al Ma'arif University after uh, speaking with, um, with, um, with, um, with stakeholders, let me say, with the students, with uh, instructors definitely, um, we have the, um, the vision and mission of the faculty and the university and the, the learning objectives and the, the course objectives um, in front of us. We spoke with, uh, with employers, okay, and we spoke with the students and instructors, and, uh, and we assessed the experience of the spring, and we had to move to a different assessment structure where we actually in, uh, emphasize the use of online formative assessments. So we now have a, a larger weight goes towards formative assessments. And uh, the purpose of formative assessments, of online formative assessments is basically, it's not to grade students. I know they will have a grade at the end, but mainly it's to, to gauge a student's learning. Okay, so the purpose here is to, um, you know, try to determine the student's strengths and capitalize on those as early as possible um, diagnose the, uh, the student's weaknesses through this repetitive um, um, uh, formative assessment and and provide feedback and uh, so, so they move forward uh, these uh, formative assessments now they divided right through the semester there's there's repetitive assessments with low stake so a low percentage goes towards this okay and this is an opportunity again i'm relating this to the bloom's taxonomy and to the upper level of the bloom's taxonomy formative assessments appear to actually work um, th this is another research that uh, I'm, I'm planning to conduct at a later stage but i do believe that formative assessments do um, a trigger and do help us achieve the higher order thinking in the um, in the Bloom's taxonomy. So if I'm talking about a learning objective that require analysis, that require criticizing, that require uh, evaluation and that I think it's easier 
um, I hope that this is the correct way, easier to do it through a formative assessment rather than a summative assessment. Um, and, and we can capitalize on, on their on students' strengths there and all if they have weaknesses, we can also work to improve um, that. So again, uh, formative assessments, uh, you know, we, we, this would require instructors to, well, firstly, to be trained on how to conduct and how to provide a constructive feedback, okay, and also um, on how to align these, for, these assessments with the learning objectives. And I think since because they are repetitive, they are uh, uh, quite large in quantity, um, this will help instructors um, and will put them in a better position to align those activities and those formative assessments to the learning objectives. I know you're all thinking now, but how do we have, do we have time to do all of that? But definitely you're right, it's so time consuming, okay? And that's why what we did at El Ma'arif University, um, we, we didn't only consider the, uh, the reduction of summative assessments and replacing that with a formative assessment. Okay, so it wasn't only this. Okay, so for example, if you look at the poll that goes down the bottom there, um, you will see that, um, you know, in the question that was asked to um, um, about 82 instructors answered this and they ranked how they spend their time um, last spring. Um, you know, they, they said, well, we spend mostly recording lectures, running live sessions, responding to students' queries and questions, preparing assessments, providing feedback on students' work, grading, responding to administrative requests. Luckily, the last one uh, came last, responding to administrative requests. But um, although, you know, instructors spend um, a, a fair bit amount of their time, actually, you know, on assessments, okay, the outcome, like uh, Ali said earlier, the outcome wasn't pleasing. You know, instructors do believe, and we do also through our um, uh, inspection, let me say, um, that the learning objectives of, uh, of the courses weren't uh, achieved as planned as, as we hoped, okay? So, so we did change a, a number of things, okay? And we're, we're hoping, this again was, wasn't the, just a, an us decision, in the e-learning committee, but also through the, the conversation that we had with instructors, with students, with the employers, with the IT department at, at here at the university, with the student affairs office, with, uh, with the family, the parents of those students as well. Um, you know, we, we change the class and the assessment structure. So for example, here we use the American credit system. So we, um, each course is split out into two days a week. Um, you know, so it's each is an hour and a half. Each session is an hour and a half. And, um, um, you know, we, we now kind of reduced, eliminated um, one of those sessions to basically the reason behind that was to allow the instructor time. Um, so by removing one of those sessions, still getting paid for it, and uh, removing one of their sessions basically to allow the instructor time to be used and invested properly in preparing smart assessments. But what I mean by smart assessment here, that assessment that basically I can analyze it to, uh, to gauge a student's learning. Uh, uh, to allow instructors to provide constructive feedback, to follow up on students, to, um, to shout to students who actually um, seem to be um, having weaknesses right at the beginning of the semester. Okay. Also, because a lot of time was spent uh, responding to students' queries and questions that was mainly due to any uh, unclarity, due to uh, unclear expectations, Okay, we conducted also online course design training and uh, so um, instructors are now in a better position uh, to instruct the students online and to also clarify expectations and that. Finally, what we did was we reduced the summative assessment down from 80% to 55%. So now there's more room, 40, 45% of the assessments are uh, and that weight of the assessment goes to formative assessments uh, for reasons that I've um, discussed earlier. 
Um, I'm not sure how we did uh, regarding time, uh, Nahina, but I will, um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll stop here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Hassan. Um, the time is uh, fine. You completed the time. Uh, but thank you so much for it's a very important topic and very nice presentation. Can we just take one minute to take any question if we have any? Uh, I got a question, Nahina. Um, no, Thank you, Hassan. Like, you know, the last two presentations were brilliant. Like, you know, and I understand your pain, Ali, and I understand where you come from, Hassan, when you said that you don't actually agree with regard to the traditional assessments. Yes, I have worked in many universities before, and yes, most of them are using the 80-20 rule with regard to assessment design. And I totally agree with you that this doesn't work, not even in online uh, platform. It is also in traditional setting because in our experience at Seek University, we are trying to make sure that when we design assessments, we design assessments for learning. And it's not mainly just engaging, um, engaging students in a way that uh, at the end of the day, we want to gauge their understanding. And um, we also have uh, graduate attributes that we need to um, uh, achieve. So teamwork, uh, conflict management, digital literacy, all of these attributes are um, necessary for students who are going to graduate and, and meet the industry uh, requirements. And I agree with you, like the research that we have done before, it says that employers are not happy with what we are doing as educators. And, and it's, it's sad because we, we are trying to do something, but like, you know, unless we have an integrated approach to everything, it doesn't work. Um, so I have some questions for you. Um, one with regard to the formative assessments that you have devised. Did you um, research about the nature of assessments that could combat cheating, that could engage students in a way that they feel that they will gain some attributes as graduates at the end of the day, not only the learning outcomes apply, evaluate, or explain, or that stuff. And the second question for you is uh, with regard to the assessment at the end of the term. Do you engage students by doing group-based assessments so you can foster some experiential learning and reflection? And then, and thank you so much again. Thank you, Samar. Um, um, uh, you reminded me when you, say, you used the word engagement. Um, I, I'll actually, uh, if you allow me, I'll share. I didn't stop sharing my screen. I will uh, reshare re my screen now to share with you, or maybe I can drop it in the box. There is something that I used. Um, uh, this is away from your question, Samar, but very, very, I had planned to speak about it. It's, um, there, is, uh, there is a website called Wheel of Names, okay? Where we actually, I had in my intro to accounting class, uh, you know, which we, we started three weeks ago, um, more than 30 students. And um, it's, it's an excellent way to keep those more than 30 students engaged right through the hour and 15 minute session by actually having their names on that wheel that you spin and then your um, they, they, the names come out and then you ask them questions. So I wanted to say that. Regarding assessments and the formative assessment and type of formative assessments that we were using, yes, so um, definitely we do have a peer-to-peer -peer, um, uh, review and peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, work that they need to work along and that hopefully will uh, um, will, will trigger their um, analysis um, skills and um, also um, their teamwork, and if it's a uh, it's a it's a project, um, the the other you know of course there there will be discussion questions right through the semester that uh, that relate to uh, real world cases and scenarios um, that are happening um, in either in Lebanon or in the region or in the world. Um, there are you know the blogs, the journals, um, um, the 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 weekly quizzes that we have, and as I said earlier, that that need to be designed in a smart way so we can actually analyze those. You know, when I give the students a, an, an, a question that has an A, B, C, D, um, <laughs> you know, I have four different colors, uh, silver, uh, gray, and red. Um, silver and gray, maybe, and uh, um, they, they may, you know, someone have read the material, may, they may get the, the, the answer nearby those two, uh, two answers. But if someone answers it read, that means he's, he's or she's uh, out of uh, completely. And so it's by, by designing smart uh, formative assessments, we can actually follow up closely on those students and uh, uh, realize their weaknesses and their strengths and potential as well.
I hope that answered your question, Sandler. Yeah, and yeah. what? how about the graduate attributes? Do you have that uh, curriculum design where uh, you got graduate oh, attributes? Yeah, 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 yes. And that's, as, as I said earlier, um, uh, we had it at, at times of traditional learning. We have it now. Um, this, unfortunately, needs to be revised, uh, I think, across uh, universities now with the move to, to e-learning and to, to be more realistic and, and to see what the... A virtual world now require us to have uh, to prepare for for employability, uh, but, uh, but but yes, and I think informative assessments they do do help us in working towards those uh, learning those graduate attributes and competencies better than summative assessments. I I, I do think because they're more repetitive they throughout the semester. Thank you, Hassan. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt, actually. Uh, we need to rush. Uh, I wish we would have more time to discuss about it because it's really, really interesting.